Hey everyone, in this video I'm going to talk to you a little bit about what an annotated bibliography is and how to do one. So what is an annotated bibliography? A lot of people get nervous when they hear they have to do one for one of their classes, and I think that's just because they don't know what an annotated bibliography is. All an annotated bibliography is, is when you take an article that you read, a scholarly article, usually from a database like EBSCO, and you cite that article in APA or MLA format, and then you write a paragraph or two of notes about the article. Uh, the notes will usually be a little summary about the article, and then a couple sentences of analysis of the sort of the strengths and weaknesses of the article. So that's all there is to an annotated bibliography. You cite an article, and then you write a little bit about it. For your annotated bibliography, you might have to do that for one source, or you might have to do that for two articles or three articles. You'll need to talk to your professor to be sure. So that's an annotated bibliography. It's just a citing a source and then writing some notes about it. So how do you do an annotated bibliography? Well, to start, you'll have to have some general topic that you want to research. Like for my example, I picked how weather affects people's moods. Then you'll go to a database like EBSCO and you'll start, start searching for scholarly journal articles or academic journal articles. And once you find one, you'll want to read it very carefully and take some notes about it. And then it'll be time to cite it and write some about it. So when you write about it, you're going to summarize the article and analyze it a little bit. So what does that mean? So to summarize an article, you'll want to talk about things like what is the, the subject of the article? Like what is it covering? Uh, and what is the main point of the authors? Like what are they arguing or talking about in relation to the subject? You'll want to talk about a little bit about the author's backgrounds by searching their names in EBSCO or online. You'll, you might want to mention what kind of degrees they have. You might mention if they've written other articles on the subject. You know, if they have degrees that relate to the subject and they've written other articles on the subject, those are good things to know. So a sentence or two about the background of the authors is good. You'll want to talk about how they, how they did their study, how they did their research. Like, did they read the works of others and combine them into one big paper? It's called a literature review. Did they interview people to gather their opinions about something and then put that together as their study? Or did they do like an experiment in a lab to study some new medicine? So you'll want to write a sentence or two about that. Uh, then you'll want to write about their conclusions. So what were the, the results of their study? What did they find out at the end? You know, did they find out that weather did affect people's moods or didn't it affect their moods? Or was it some sort of mixed results where sometimes it does and sometimes it doesn't? You'll want to write a sentence or two about that. And once you're finished doing those things, you should have a pretty good summary of the article. Next, you'll want to analyze the article a little bit and think of that in terms of strengths and weaknesses. Are you talking about why or why not would this be a good source to use for a paper? Uh, some things you could look at. Uh, is the article new and up to date or is it a couple years old? If it's brand new and it's the newest research, that's a strength. It's, it's a positive thing. If it's a couple years old, you know, maybe you can still use it, but it's not the most cutting edge research. So that'd be kind of a limitation or a weakness of the article. Uh, other weaknesses, you know, does it have a lot of really good statistics and facts and details that you can use? If it does, that's really positive. If it doesn't, that's kind of a weakness. If it doesn't have as much data that you could use for a paper. Uh, or maybe, you know, one of the authors, their degree is in a field that doesn't really relate to the subject. So that might make it a little bit less useful. Uh, you could talk about the audience of the article. Is it, is it written for people that are also researchers or is it written for sort of in a general, easy to understand way so anyone can use it? So think of those kinds of things. You know, why would this, why would this be a good source for a paper? Why would it not be a good source for a paper? Uh, those are the, all the kinds of strengths and weakness things that you could talk about. Uh, like I said, it doesn't have to be more than a paragraph or two, just a couple, a sentence or two on each of those things I mentioned, and you should be fine. Uh, but those are the basics of writing an annotated bibliography. Like I said, it's just when you cite a source and then write a paragraph or two of summary and analysis of it. So you summarize the article in step one and then a little bit analysis of the strengths and weaknesses of the article. And make sure it's a, a scholarly or academic journal article from a database like EBSCO. So those are the basics of writing an annotated bibliography. If you have questions or need help, please feel free to contact the PHCC library.